Okay, hopefully you can see everything you need to see. All right, so um, some of the things that you need, you need um, something to paint on. So I have a canvas I got from Dollar General and I have, and you need paint. And I found these at Dollar General. That's um, some pink and some gold and some black and some purple and you need additives and so um at dollar tree i found um not only some more paint but i found some pouring medium this is called sergeant art pouring medium it's very inexpensive this was literally a dollar for this bottle it's very thin uh, and what that's going to do is it's going to thin your paint so that it flows really easily so I'm going to show you how you can take cheap paint and cheap um, flowing medium and just make it work. And then this is a, um, a gloss water-based sealer from Mod, Mod Podge. Um, and that's going to help seal the canvas after it's dry. That's going to be, um, probably I'll have to piece the video together to show you exactly what I mean. But again, that was at Dollar General and it was a buck for that little bitty two fluid ounce bottle of, um, of gloss sealer. You can also go to Michael's or you can go to Hobby Lobby or you can go to one of those places and you can get um, a more expensive uh, pouring medium. One of the better ones is by Deco Art, and it helps prevent crazing, which is really important. And also I go to um, Lowe's and I get these big jugs of Flood Floatrol. It is a latex-based paint additive that people use for um, painting houses uh, that helps eliminate brush and roller marks and improves the flow and the leveling of the paint and it thins it a little bit and it's very similar um, to the pouring medium that I got except it's a bit thicker. So um, when you're using um, more paint, lots and lots and lots of paint, you might need more um additive than that but when you're doing the the little eight by ten canvas like this it doesn't take a lot of pouring medium it doesn't take a lot of paint so you don't need that much this is the kind of sealer that i tend to use on my canvases most of my canvases are 16 by 20. this is a spray on fast drying non-yellowing um, matte finish acrylic sealer that artists use on their canvases to seal and protect the paint. And um, it comes in a aerosol can and um, it's pricey and um, you won't need it if you're creating art for your bedroom wall, but you do need it if you're creating art that you would like to sell one day. And so it just makes it last longer, it protect, protects the paint and it seals it and it, and it helps um, keep your paintings lasting longer. You can also make um, paint additive that will help your paint flow better and last longer with school glue. And I got this at um, Dollar General, I think. And it was a buck for a four ounce bottle of school glue. And you mix this with water to the consistency that you need. You can make it thin like that, or you can make it a bit thicker like the flow trawl. Um, you still have to seal it when you're done with it. Um, uh, and you also definitely want to make sure that this paint doesn't get all over your clothes. You want to wear a smock or old clothes that you don't care about because um, when you get this, uh, the paint mixed with the glue on your clothes um, or the Floetrol, it does not come out. So just be aware of that. And also I got these little um, cups, these little condiment cups, because once the paint is mixed, you can put a color in each cup and you can control exactly how much uh, paint you're pouring for a little canvas. And so I'm probably going to use these tonight as well. So I'm going to open those up so that I can get the paint ready and I'll show you how I get the paint ready and then we'll go right on and start pouring some paint. I also got at the Dollar General, um, I think it was a buck, it may have been a little bit more, I have to check the receipt, a spatula, just a regular um, silicone sort of rubber spatula 
um, because you can manipulate the paint with this and you can sort of draw in your puddle of paint and create something interesting with it. So I'm probably going to do some of that with that cute little spatula. You can never have too many silicone spatulas when you're doing acrylic art. At least I can. <laughs> Okay, so now I've got all of my um, stuff together here. And I will tell you, this was Dollar General. The canvas was $2. The school glue was um, 50 cents. The spatula was a dollar. The art skills paint, the gold paint was a $1.75. Um, the, it says blue, but it was black. And the pink paint was a dollar and the purple paint was a dollar. And so all total at Dollar General before I got additives, um, before I found the other stuff at Dollar Tree, I spent $8.75, including tax. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, get my canvas ready. And I think what I want to do is I want to do some gold and purple because purple is the best color God ever made and I'm going to create something swirly and pretty that's what I imagine I will be doing there's my canvas um, I'm probably going to start with some white um, so first things first, let's get some purple paint ready. Ooh, it's nice and sealed. There we go. You want about half of your mixture to be paint and half of your mixture to be pouring medium. You're always going to want some wipes and some paper towels around when you're doing this as well um, because it gets very messy. So, you know, if you're doing this on your kitchen table, make sure your kitchen table is covered um, with craft paper or something to protect it. Um, Cause like I said, acrylic paint does not like to come out and you can't exactly use um, polish remover on it to clean it up either. That's also sealed. Good to know. So about half and half of pouring medium and paint. We take a popsicle stick and we stir it. And once you get it completely mixed up, the paint will not be a different color because of the pouring medium. The pouring medium disappears into it and the paint retains its color altogether. So um, it looks at first like it's going to make it lighter, but it does not make it lighter. And when you got it mixed to the right consistency, you'll know because it'll be paint that flows. So that actually needs a little more pouring medium. It needs to flow. It needs to be nice and drippy off that stick. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. Now we're going to set aside our purple. And we're going to go for some gold. Maybe we'll make the base black. How about that? Oh, that gold is thick. That's going to probably need a bit more pouring medium, I think. Stay. The gold needs to be thick because typically the metallics will disappear in the rest of the paint. So you want them to 
it's good that it starts out a little thicker than the other color does. quite a bit thicker too. Typically I mix these in bottles and I bought marbles to go in the bottom of the bottle. I can show you my bottle of gold paint has been sitting here for a bit so it's separated. So when you shake it, the marble mixes it really well. And then it flows freely out of the bottle so that it uh, becomes a really lovely, pourable consistency. I think what I'm going to do is add my this with the stick. It's not mixing very well, so I'm just going to pour that into my um, existing bottle so I can shake it up really good. Got a little stuff on the canvas. It's not gonna matter. A lot of times I pour straight from these bottles and just make swirls of paint directly on the canvas, which I'm gonna do with the black um, because I already have it mixed up. some gloves I have right here I also got these at the dollar store I think I got a pack at Dollar General it's like a like a a 50 pack for five dollars so it's not too bad okay so as soon as your hands are protected and your person is protected um, then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that paint's really, really, really well mixed. Okay. This one is mixed with Floetrol. I'm going to test it. Okay. Make sure we don't have any lumps. So the one, what we want to do is we want to really coat the canvas with black or white. Do all white or do all black because what it's going to do is it's going to help, it's going to help the, um, poured paint to flow better. And we're going to use our spatula to spread that around and give it a pretty good wet base to flow into. Don't really want a bunch of dry spots. This is where my um, spatula comes in really handy. It spreads it really nicely edge to edge and you're definitely going to want to be able to pick up your canvas so the gloves are really really necessary you want it to be able to flow it's got to be able to flow off the canvas and drip down the sides if that makes sense it will in a minute you'll see what i mean it'll make sense in a minute One good way to take care of your spatula and so forth is to have a, a bucket of water handy um, and that keeps things nice. So this is what's called a clean pour. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start pouring the paint in a puddle. Okay, so we've got a nice black canvas and now I'm going to pour a little bit of the purple right in the middle. And then I'm going to pour some gold right in the middle of that. And then more purple. It's okay if it drips on the edges because it's going to get covered up as soon as you start tilting it. And more gold. And these are just little cups, just a couple of ounces. And it's still quite a lot of paint. 
once you've got additive in it, it makes it go quite a bit further. So you can use craft paint and it's perfectly fine. It helps, it's great, it's lovely, it does a great job. Okay, so this is what we call a clean pour. You're not mixing the paint together in a cup. You're just pouring it directly onto the canvas one color at a time. You can do as many colors or as few colors as you want. Now, you could begin to manipulate this if you wanted to, or you could just start tilting and spreading the paint. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna start tilting. And then when you come back to center, it looks a certain way and then tilt and then back to center and then tilt. You just take your time and let the paint spread. And then it starts going off the edges. It's going to drip. That's okay. See what it's doing along the edge there. Tilt it that way. Tilt it back this way. I want every edge of the canvas covered. As it goes along, you're gonna be able to spread paint because there's gonna be plenty of it, plenty of paint on that canvas. Let me get that corner. Okay, now we have an opportunity here to manipulate this a bit more. I'm gonna take these gloves off. Should I have my paper towels handy? Put those aside. Okay, so I'm going to make some decisions about how I wanna manipulate this. Maybe I'll try my straw. I can see if we can uncover some of that black paint as well. Just don't touch the canvas with the straw and don't suck in through the straw, suck in outside of the straw. Take your time when you're blowing too. You don't want to end up making yourself lightheaded. That's kind of cool. Okay. Maybe they're flower buds, black on purple flower buds. It's gonna look different after it dries too. So it's gonna be whatever it becomes. I touched the paint with a straw. Be careful there, Melody. So that's one way that you can manipulate the paint. And that, believe it or not, you could decide you're done with that. Or you could take a skewer to it and you could draw stems, which I think I might do. Let me take my bamboo skewer. You can get a pack of these at Walmart for a couple bucks. I'm going to take the blunt end and I'm going to draw with it. This is called scrofuto. Oh, 
the paint's going to settle itself back in. But the lines that you create are moving the color around on the canvas. And then the color is going to settle. It's going to settle back in. So yeah, drawing on your paint, drawing on your, whatever your media is, that's called scraffito, and it's a method that people have used for a very long time. To manipulate paint, or clay, um, or stone, to draw in it, to create on it. We've got some areas that have a lot more paint than others. Um, so it's going to be an unevenly dried piece, more than likely. So um, that can be done. And when it dries, it's going to be very shimmery and beautiful with all that gold and purple. And, um, and it's just going to be something that brings a lot of joy and happiness. So that is one way to create uh, fluid acrylic art. Um, now I've got to find a home for this to rest while it drip dries because it's going to be very drippy for a while. And then I'm going to pull out a bigger canvas and I'm going to show you some other techniques that I like to use um, using a half blown up balloon and, um, and I'll mix up some school glue and water and show you um, how to make that additive for really, really, really cheap. Um, using a bigger cup and, um, and a bottle of water.